Live Jerome Party Studio. Live Jerome Harden Studio. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the last of my discast. I will say about so you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll see you later. What's up on JR? You sure alright? Let's get started. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the latest on my update that I'm willing to tell you about. So as you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll tell you the latest. Hello, my name is Jerome J. Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. So the topic we want to talk about uh, today is uh, I have a really good story to tell y'all. Um, I just recently thought about this while uh, watching uh, TV, um, and it's about the time I was a Kirby salesman. And um, what that means is, uh, if you don't know or you don't know what Kirby is or what a Kirby salesman is, it's actually, um, Kirby is a, a vacuum cleaner. Um, it was uh, created back in the late 1800s and to the early 1900s um, by the man, uh, his last name is Kirby. So um, let's cut to the chase. Um, so what prompted me to tell this story on what I was doing as a Kirby salesman because it's going to be fun for me telling y'all this story is going to be legit um and hopefully y'all understand uh sometimes people are not honest um when you sign up for a job or fill out application um that what that what has happened to me back in 2014 so um yeah so you guys are ready for me to tell a story all right so here it goes so once upon a time um I was at home. Um, I was looking through. Uh, I was looking for a job. I desperately needed a job at the time. Uh, back in 2014, um, trying to move out of my parents' house and stuff. But anyways, um, I was looking for a job. I was on Craigslist looking through a series of jobs that are available because at the time uh, I was um, at ITT Tech. Um, trying to get my a job within my field which is network systems administration so i was going through craigslist um there was a lot of stuff going on such as uh meet up for prostitutes hiring prostitutes uh meeting john's all that stuff all that weird crap so um i was looking through craigslist and i seen that saying um a high paying position i don't remember um how much they were paying i think it's like five thousand a week or 500 a week, something like that so um i look at the ad and there's a phone number there so um i looked at the phone number i gave that guy a call and a guy answered uh saying uh da -da 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 -da, distributing how can i help you i said yes um i'm interested in position uh customer oh that reminds me it just popped up. It was a customer representative position, kind of like helping people, uh, helping people through phone, all that stuff, taking phone calls, all that stuff. So I uh, called that number and a guy answered and said, um, I told him I was interested in the position. And he said, okay, would you like to come in for an interview? I replied, yeah, sure, why not? So um, he uh, wanted me to come in for an interview the same day, the same second that I called that number. So um, I went, got in my car, uh, dressed up nice, dressed professional, went up to that location. And when I got up there, it was on the south end of town of Huntsville, Alabama. So um, I went in, took a left, and I saw this small building. It didn't have no sign except the right on the door. Um, it was uh i'm not gonna say the name uh, i don't i'm not like that to call people out and stuff but i'm just uh, gonna leave it anonymous um i just look at the name of the company and i went in and the guy was at his desk and he told me to take a seat while he was finishing doing something and when i first went in uh the office was kind of pretty uh empty but it kind of looked nice it kind of smells like an uh, office you know um, so I sat down for a few minutes. I just sat there. 
here in the fish tank. I see a fish tank on the left side once I come in the door. And the guy put, pulled me in the back and he started interviewing me. He had me fill an application. I asked him what I'm going to be doing. What's the position about? Oh, I'll tell you once you get done with everything. And he told me the same thing on the phone. Uh, what's the position about? Oh, I'll tell you everything once you come in. So I fill out an application um, and fill out all the information that I he needed to know, um, all that stuff. And so when I got through with the application and he started interviewing me, he asked me questions. Are you good with customer service skills? Um, what uh, what will it take to be a good employee? And I answered back. I answered politely as uh, professional as I can. And when he got to the point of um, what I will be doing, he told me he will be building machines and all that stuff. Cause Back at, at the time, um, I wasn't uh, thinking right. I was, you know, rushing to get a job so quick so, you know, I can make money because I had bills to pay, car insurance, food. I mean, I was living at my, at my parents' house at the time, so it wasn't much on me like I was doing now. Um, it's a lot of responsibility to live on my own, by the way, but at the time I was living with my parents, um... He uh, told me that I'll be building machines, and uh, I said okay. And uh, and he told I think he told me there will be unpaid training. So um, yeah, so during the interview, um, he told me right off the bat I think it was Kirby salesman. So um, and I never knew what Kirby is. I don't know what the vacuum cleaner is. I don't know what it looks like at the time. So. Um, after all that talking, he scheduled me back for orientation. And he told me right off the bat that's going to be unpaid training. So I was kind of confused right there because you told me it was a customer representative position and you promised me you're going to pay me $500, something a week, something like that. So um, I didn't know it was a red flag at the time. I didn't know too much about sales. Um, this was way before I started doing graphic design. So um, after that, I just went home, wait for orientation next day, and I showed up back. Um, show back up, I think the next day, and the same guy guided me back in with the other people. So, and he told me he explained to us that we will be Kirby salesmen. So. We'll be selling vacuum cleaners, and not on top of that, it ain't gonna be like selling through the internet and all that stuff like most people are doing now. It's gonna be door to door salesmen. Um, and I asked myself, who does door to door sales anyway? I mean, people don't do that anymore. It's like it's back in 2014, so people ought to know that door to door sales is very rare right now. Um, so. I went in and the orientation began. He started playing music, um, trying to get our hopes up, trying to get pumped up, um, trying to get us ready to uh, be a Kirby salesman. So he started pulling out the vacuum cleaner and he uh, demonstrated uh, how the vacuum cleaner works. And he started taking out all the nooks and crannies, pieces out of the box, um, and then after that, he explained to us um, how the vacuum cleaner works, how uh, showing us all the filter pads, how it works. Um, and then he started vacuuming the floor and with the pad inside the vacuum. And once he is done, he pulls the pad out and demonstrates to us how much dirt is on that pad. So, um, and same thing too, uh, he just started pulling, I think he did uh, put a vacuum suck suction thingy on the mattress as well. So imagine he was sucking it up and there was that much dirt on the pad from that mattress. And also um, what he has mentioned, I think uh, it just came into my head while I was talking about this. And it also came to my mind a little bit a while ago of what he told me. And he said it was dust mites living in that dust. So he told me that um, uh, dust mites will be on your mouth 
and they go to the bathroom on your mouth 20 times a day. So, and he started using swear words like shit and all that stuff. Does my shit on your mouth 20 times a day. So, um, I was like, okay, uh, so that you, um, want us to, uh, believe that dust mites will go to your, go to the bathroom on your mouth 20 times a day. I said, okay, um, but to me, it was, uh, back then, I, well, I was, uh, naive and I was gullible. Um, I was young. I was 21, you know, young and dumb. I was in college at the time, so you know how most college students are at the time. They are naive, young, and dumb, or whatever. They like to get drugged, have sex, and all that stuff. I mean, that's how college kids are these days. Same thing back in high school. They want to do whatever they want. They want to have sex. You know, they want to um, be naive. They want to do dumb decisions. I mean, I get that. We were kids at the time. So, um, I'm 29 now, and uh, I'm telling you my experience with the Kirby. So, um... Yeah, he t after he told me that, uh, we went on with the demonstration, and I don't remember how long it lasted, but let me mind you that uh, unpaid training, I mean, who would want to go to a job with unpaid training? You don't get nothing. And after all that um, training is done, we came back the next day, had to do the same thing. Uh, at one time, he had to uh, have me clean up... Uh, chairs and all that stuff, uh, couches with the Kirby vacuum cleaner. So I played around with the vacuum cleaner, got one of the pads, started sucking up, sucking on the um, couch with the sucky thingy. And here, there is a little bit of dirt on there. So um, yeah, so it just amazed me how much dirt was on that uh, couch and stuff. So I was pretty made how the vacuum cleaner worked, and on top of it all off, uh, what it what it traumatized me a bit this morning that when I was watching the salespeople videos on Kirby and all that stuff, it uh traumatized my mind that I have to do when he told me I have to demonstrate this to try to sell the family and friends. So keep in mind, uh. It's 2021, I mean, 2022 now, and back then, I'm pretty sure that they don't, they're not rich, they're not wealthy, even though we, you got a $500,000 house and a $60,000 car, um, I'm pretty sure at the time, people are still struggling with their bills, so who in their right mind would want to pay over two to $3,000 for a vacuum cleaner. I don't get that. I mean, you can get a Kirby for much cheaper than that. And I'm not understanding why um, these distributors are trying to jack up the price. And it really irks me to this day that, you know, a lot of stores, grocery stores are jacking up the price. And yet the Kirby salesmen are jacking up the price and expect people to buy it. Um, and I watched a lot of videos on about Kirby and like I uh, back then I was uh, reading reviews on the Kirby salesman and let me tell you when I was reading those it wasn't good reviews some of them are good some of them had fun while selling vacuum cleaners but Kirby salesman is not for everybody you know I mean Kirby might be a good vacuum but you know it's the people that make the Kirby company look bad and to me, um, it's very bad business practice. I own the business myself, and I've been in business um, for graphic designer since 2015. So I do not get why people would be dishonest about getting paid with doing demonstrations and all that stuff. And I'm not understanding why they would lie to you to get you to stay just to get nothing at all. Um, so um, let's go. Let's fast forward to the story. So after all that orientation that we had to get in the van so like when we first got when this was my first day on the van and stuff of course the van doesn't look decent and the uh, the worst day of uh, i worked three days uh for the company and out of these three days the worst day i remember is on a thursday it was hot you know it had the van didn't have no air conditioning whatsoever so 
I was sweating my balls off that day, um, riding in the van, um, and it was very miserable. And not to mention, we, uh, almost at the beginning of, you know, trying to sell the vacuum cleaner, one guy slid, fished, almost fishtailed the van into a ditch, and we almost died right there. And it was a very scary experience, um, and plus, that dude didn't even have a license, and the, the other dude on the passenger side in the front told him, stop the car, stop the car, you can't even drive right. I mean, what's wrong with you? You almost, you almost killed us, man. So, once we pull into the gas station, um, and he went inside, I think, to get a snack or something, and me and the other guys were just talking, and I just expressed my concerns to him to say, is that dude okay? Is that dude even allowed to drive? He said, no, no, no. He said, he don't even have a license. We could have died right there. And I was very surprised on what had happened. So I pray to God that this day couldn't get any worse. So I prayed to him and I said to him, let me make it through the rest of the day so I don't have to deal with this dude ever again. So we went on in a hot van, sweltering, you know, and there's no air conditioning, of course. So, um, all right. So once we, uh, get to a location um sometimes we go into the house to use the bathroom and all this stuff and sometimes it's, uh, it's cool in the house which is very nice instead of being out there in the hot sun so sometimes they open the door from the van to let the fresh air get in our face and let me tell you that felt good at the time so imagine being in a van for hours in sweltering heat with no air conditioning and it was very miserable, let me tell you. Very miserable, very miserable. Okay, and then after that, um, on the first day while I was with the, in the van, um, it wasn't that bad, you know. Just had a nice drive from Huntsville, uh, almost all the way to Nashville, by the way. We went to Columbia, Tennessee, trying to sell a vacuum um, and stuff. So, we were around, um, and pretty much, I didn't do anything that day. I mean, we, I just sat around in a van, and nobody wouldn't help me demonstrate the vacuum. So, um, it's kind of a, you know, pretty scary experience right there. But the first day was pretty easy. I sat in the van all day, you know, and, you know, I was just writing stuff down and all that stuff. And, you know, it wasn't until later that day the van had broke down. And I, we sat around in hours and hours in the sun. And imagine you sit around in hours and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, hours away from home, don't know where you're at. And it sucks. It really did suck. So we sat around, we sat around, and another guy uh, gave us some water and all that stuff. And it helped us a little bit. But after a few hours we tried to start the van and it started right back up so we just left we headed back to the office and the day was done that was it that was the first day and the guy that recruited me said how'd it go oh it's, it's cool it's okay it's okay i guess so we went i went home we skipped thursday because i already explained that what had happened it was the worst day out of three and the last day we was on a saturday and you know i had to go to school on the Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So last day was Saturday, and we went in. I went in another van with a guy and a girl. So um, thank God I didn't go out back out with that dude ever again. Um, Cause he, the, I don't know what's going on with him. I think he was the worst. Um, he almost. Got me killed, you know, fish chilling into the ditch and all that stuff. That's a very scary experience. I mean, thank God I made that out of life. So, um, fast forward to Saturday. Um, so I went into the last van, and it was the last day I worked, by the way, um, before I uh, went to a temporary job. So I went in, uh, we <clears throat> went in the van, went on our way, went to Tennessee. Um, so fast forward. Um, there was a guy, there was a girl explaining to me all this and all that uh, about what am I doing with the vacuum and all this stuff, how I'm supposed to operate the vacuum and stuff. So, um, yeah, so 
we uh, oh, where was I? Okay, so we were wait went into Colombia again, and uh, let me mind you, once they uh, op uh went to a door, do going door to door. Um, of course they offer you free cleaning service, whatever. Offer you a free shampoo kit or a, a liter of coke or whatever. And I don't know what they were saying, so um, once we made to a stop to a house, um, I they told this guy told me to go 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 go. So I went in, grabbed my stuff, went into a house. That what we supposed to do. That was that was our objective. We are supposed to go door to door. We are supposed to go in people's houses. And with me, I'm not even comfortable going to people's houses like that, and especially around the southern areas such as Tennessee. Alabama, Georgia, Texas, Mississippi, all these southern states. You know, all these southern states are armed with guns and stuff at their homes. So imagine going to somebody else's home and the driver just drives off, leaves you there with no way to contact him. And um, I'm stuck at this house and the homeowner, thankfully, thank God he was a nice guy. I applaud him for that. So he was very patient, and the only problem of me showing the vacuum is, one, I was very shy, I was very nervous, I couldn't talk right, and then on top of that, I keep coughing constantly, very bad. Um, it was very, uh, I kept coughing and coughing and coughing. I think it was the cat he had in there. So, um, as I was doing the demonstration, which I am barely knowing anything. Um, he was very patient, thank God. I applaud him for that. So, after a few hours, the van came back, picked me up, you know, and then uh, after I packed my stuff up, after I finished them doing the demonstration, we went on our way trying to find more houses. And mind you, it was very, it was very rainy at the time, so um, didn't help that much. Um, it was back in August, so... Um, it was almost Labor Day, almost the Labor Day weekend. So, went back in the van. Uh, we got something to eat, drove around some more, and then after that, it was my only demonstration that I did. And we went back to Huntsville, went back to the office, um, unpacked up all our stuff, and uh, after they um did that, I just went home and uh. And I just waited until another job called me. And, of course, um, I didn't know anything at the time. I still don't know anything at the time. Um, went to a temporary position. And I quit the, the Kirby salesman job. He said, I told him, hey, I found another job. I said, okay, okay. That's what you want to do? That's what you want to do? Well, good luck with your job then. So, he hung up in my face. And... I guess that's it. Um, one thing they don't tell you is um, what I've been hearing, what I w was watching in reviews, um, while uh, looking at the reviews online and stuff, and they, uh, a lot of people have been saying that they don't pay you anything. It's just commission-based. Um, all of it's just commission-based. You don't get anything. You don't uh, fill out tax papers. You know They're not honest with you and all that stuff. And um, when I researched the company and I found a bunch of red flags on Facebook uh, uh, of vans, their vans, Rocket City Distributing, uh, their vans creeping around neighborhoods, trying to go door to door. And people have been warning other people just to stay away. Do not let these people in because, you know, like I said, uh, people are armed with guns and all that stuff. So imagine yourself in a dangerous situation where you have you know where you don't have no protection at all and if they ask you to leave and you don't leave they pull guns out on you because you know they have the right to protect their homes you know that right um i'm in alabama so you know it's very common to have protection just to protect your home i mean you know you don't even know what the uh, kirby salesman are capable of doing. I heard so many horror stories about Kirby Sullivan trying to rob people, you know, trying to rape women, you know, and I just literally heard a story about um, a homeowner raping a woman, 
and she was very unconscious. He offered the sales person a drink and she literally passed out and got raped. So that's what I heard. So, you know, these companies do not tell you what you're going to be doing and they don't give you no warning or whatever. After training, they don't give a fuck. They just let you go out, sell vacuums and barely make anything, even though you sell vacuums. So that was really fucked up right there. And I did respond to an ad when a person complained about not getting paid anything. I responded to the ad. He agrees with me. He knows what I'm talking about. So it's just, you know, not for everyone. So if you selling vacuums and making good money out of it, congratulations. I'm proud of you. But, you know, just do not tell these people that they are employees just to tell them they're not employees, that they're their own, they their own contractors. They are on their own. They are individual contractors and they are it's commission based. I mean, it's not a nine to five, it's commission based. But yeah, they want you to work long hours just to get nothing at all. Just to work for them, just to get them money and you don't get paid anything. I mean there's ought to be a labor law about that situation right there. So um I hope that, you know, this story that I told you will help understand of what is going on with the Kirby distributors making Kirby look bad right now. Because the man himself who created vacuums or created good products, I mean, it's just the people that are trying to run him down to the ground, which is not very fair to him because he worked so hard to get his name out there. And it's, it's very sad that people are just wanting to piss on his foundation like that. That's very sad right there. So if you know. <laughs> wow. So I did a lot of talking today. And I didn't even you know. Slurred my words. To words I barely did. So I congratulated myself for that. So what I had to say about this. Um, I hope you know this story. Uh, me telling this story. Would you know entertain you and you know help you understand about the Kirby company I don't know if the company is still around I don't think it's not around but if I uh look at it again or look it up again they're still around I'll just I'll just let you guys know but hopefully the story you know gave you some information I thought I would uh tell my side of the story about the Kirby company the Kirby salesman job you know it's just commission based it's not a nine to five you're better off working a minimum wage job anyway so yeah so all right so i think that's the topic i was going to talk about today and i hope you enjoy this and tune in for another topic in the future so i'm signing off i'm jerome harden founder and graphic designer of jerome harden studios i am out peace